In this video, we're going to explain how to read the wave equation. So again, the wave equation describes a traveling wave that has a velocity v, that has a wavelength, lambda, that has an amplitude a, and it has a frequency of oscillation. So if the equation, which has a standard form of y as a function of x and t, is equal to the amplitude times the cosine of the wave number times x minus the angle of frequency times t, if we then get the equation written like this, we should be able to find what the wave number is, what the angular frequency is, what the frequency of oscillation is, what the wavelength is, what the velocity is, and the direction of the wave, the direction of the velocity. How do you find that? Well, first of all, uh, oh, we didn't put the amplitude down, so let's put the amplitude. What's the amplitude equal to? Question mark. All right. So, first of all, the amplitude is easy. That's this right here. And if this is in standard units, we should be able to say that A is therefore equal to 0.02 meters, assuming the standard MPKS units. All right, wave number, uh, that's K, that would be the constant in front of the X, so we can say that K is equal to 5 times pi. And then the frequency, the angle of frequency of oscillation, omega, that can be read right here, so we say that omega is equal to uh, 20 pi. All right, so from that, can we figure out the oscillatory frequency, the frequency at which this oscillates, which is f? So since we know that omega is equal to 2 pi f, we can then conclude that f is equal to omega divided by 2 pi. And since omega is equal to, right here, this is the 20 pi, so 20 pi divided by 2 pi, which is equal to 10, and the units would have to be hertz. All right, so now we found the frequency of this wave. What about the wavelength? Can we find lambda? Well, since we know what k is equal to, and we know that k is equal to 2 pi divided by lambda, which then implies that lambda is equal to 2 pi divided by k. 2 pi divided by what k is equal to, and we determined k was equal to 5 pi. The pi's cancel out, 2 divided by 5 is 0 0.4, and of course the units would have to be meters, standard units. So we know now that the wavelength is 0 0.4 meters. What about the velocity? Well, we can find the velocity in several ways. We know that the basic equation for velocity, velocity is equal to frequency times wavelength. And the frequency uh, that we found, and the wavelength, mm, let's see here, that we found as well. So this is equal to the frequency of 10 hertz times the wavelength of 0 0.4 meters. So that would be equal to 4 meters per second. So now we also found the velocity. Now, what is the direction of the velocity? Well, that depends upon the equation. If this is a negative sign, that means that the phase angle is subtracted, means the velocity is to the right. If this is a positive sign, then the velocity will be to the left. So in this case, the velocity is going to be the positive direction. Okay, I'll get rid of that, otherwise you might get confused with the little negative sign there. Okay, and amplitude, we already found 0.02 meters. Now there's another way of looking at velocity. Notice that velocity is frequency, frequency times wavelength, so frequency is uh, omega divided by 2 pi, so we can say that velocity is equal to omega divided by 2 pi. And then lambda can be written in terms of the wave number. Notice, uh, let's see, where did I go here? Right here. So lambda can be expressed in terms of 2 pi over k, so we can write this as 2 pi over k. And so then the 2 pi's cancel out, so we can see that velocity is equal to omega divided by k. Since I have my omega right here, which is 20 pi. And since my k right here is 5 pi, the pi's cancel out. 20 divided by 5 is 4, and that would be 4 meters per second. So notice that you can also find the velocity of the wave by simply taking omega and dividing it by k, which also gives you the velocity of the wave. That comes in handy sometimes. So hopefully this video makes it a lot easier to read and understand the wave equation in the form a cosine of kx minus omega t. And again, it doesn't matter if this says cosine or sine, it just simply means that the position of the wave shifts at t equals zero. Other than that, you have the exact same wave equation and the exact same ways of finding all the various aspects of your wave. But that's how 
handy the wave equation is and how completely it explains how waves uh, move and how you get the amplitude, the velocity, the frequency and so forth of your wave.